Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Cole and I speak to the forgotten Hollywood maven, Manny Pacheco. <laughs> hey, well, Manny. We're uh, back on the maven kick. Oh, my God. Manny, you may not be aware of this, but uh, Art and I, every week, review uh, one of the films or old TV shows that are on the Vintage Film Channel. Mm -hmm. Grace's, you know Grace, Grace, uh, uh, Grace's collection of old films and old TV shows. She's rescued them from dust bins everywhere. And some of them are really old. Some of them, of course, the TV shows really old means 1950, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and your name came up in a conversation with her. And it was about how that era, post-World War II, early television, how mm -hmm. everything changed. Right. Movies changed, television changed. There was a lot of, um, they were at war with each other, and yet they fed off each other. Yes, and and by the way, uh, send Grace McKay my best as well. <laughs> I, um, yeah, you know, te television has had such a problematic history as opposed to radio, which had a real blessed history. And uh, m m the movie moguls loved radio as a companion piece to cinema. Folks could uh, actually take their, 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 writings to radio and 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 they would promote their the films that were coming out in in tandem with it television on the other hand was supposed to come out in the early 1940s it wasn't able to because of the war and of course the war effort took all of the materials that would make television that went into making bombs after the war it looked like television was going to emerge but it took a long time to get television sets into people's homes and once they did, and there wasn't a lot between 1946 and 1950, and there was just not a lot of homes with television sets, they were showing just inferior product like um, cartoon uh, or, or children's programming. They were sure. showing uh, local news. They were showing wrestling. Yeah. They were showing the roller derby. And one man tried to change that and, that, and that man is Robert Ripley. You know, believe it or not, Rip, Ripley's believe it or not, Robert Ripley. He made 13 episodes of a very exciting show that was going to show the promise of television. And it, and it looked like he was on his way, but he suddenly died. And so after 13 programs, he died. And so we had to wait another couple of years. But there's no question that the movie moguls hated television. It was keeping people home, keeping sure. them away from going to the movie theaters. And therein lies the rub. So I think an extra year or two probably slowed down the progress of television because of the movie moguls. Sure. Mm. I remember, Manny, I remember as a kid, um, the movie theaters, to compete with television, got air conditioning. Mm. Oh! <laughs> and all the movie theaters had banners with air conditioning, like icicles, written in icicles. I, I remember that. that distinctly because of television, not because they wanted to spend the money on air conditioning on big theater. You know. That's great. I did not know that. I'm going to use that. Can I steal that? Because that's oh, absolutely. Great. That yeah. is absolutely. great. We won't. We won't. We won't say a word. It's just it'll no. be a secret between <laughs> us and and five thousand of our uh, audience. The movie moguls were doing more than that. They were creating Cinerama and Vista yeah. Vision Ab and absolutely. Technicolor, right. and they were doing yeah. everything they could to keep people going, every, the epics, the big movies, Ivanhoe and you, The yep. Robe, everything was huge and bigger to compete against those seven inch screens. Yeah. But people were still staying home and watching television. And then a number of remarkable things happened. On little bitty screens. Yes. On those great bitty screens those and they were great, still watching it. Those great big seven inch screens, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and, re and remember, when, when TV asked if they could air the, the Oscars live, what did the movie mogul say? No. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. But a couple of things changed everything. And let me go over some of these things that were so incredibly important to the advent of television. The first of which, uh, early on, sports wrestling, uh, roller derby, and other sports joined in thinking the television was something to air live. So yeah. the, 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 what happened is that the major leagues joined in and baseball became relevant on television and it came in at just the right time. Yeah. August of 1951, the Dodgers are ahead by 13 and a half games over the New York Giants. By the end of the season, the Giants have caught them. They end up in a three game playoff and of course, Bobby Thompson hits the shot heard round the world and 
baseball was here to stay on television yeah. because now people were going to buy televisions to watch yeah. the season, you know, coming coming into the future. And then you get folks like, you know, Willie Mays and Hank Aaron um, all of a sudden starting to, you know, gain a, a, a viewership and, and, and success. So baseball had a lot to do with the popularity of television, but it wasn't just baseball. It was one actor, because remember, it wasn't just the movie moguls who were against the small screen television. The writers were against it. The actors were against it. They felt it was slumming if they ended up on television. Well, one actor decided they were not going to slum and they were going to turn television into a must-watch small screen experience. And that actor, of course, was Lucille Ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lucille Ball changed everything, and and add to that, I think we've had this conversation before. Desi Arnaz decided to preserve television as opposed to the kinescopes, but preserve television with the three camera shots and and, right. and the use of video. So Lucy, of course, is an obvious reason why now folks started watching television. In fact, Lucy was so popular that nobody went to the movies on Monday evenings because that's how popular I Love Lucy was. But there are other reasons as well, and one of those was when a great general of World War II decided to run for president. Now, he hadn't decided if he was going to be a Democrat or a Republican. And so that made everything just more compelling. But when Dwight D. Eisenhower decided to run for president, the Republican convention was now aired on television. And it was so compelling to watch the the, the television cameras look at the back door of the smoke-filled room where they were not allowed to go into, where... Eisenhower was very accessible. And then he chooses probably one of the most complicated television individuals of the last half of the 20th century. Richard Nixon is his running mate. So here you got Eisenhower and Nixon making television way more compelling. And of course, it was cemented years later with the emergence of John Kennedy. And then something else happened. King George died. And now it was time for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. And we were able to now watch from another part of the globe the coronation of a queen. So relevant that she only died, what, last year. So that became really relevant. And then finally, finally, the Army McCarthy hearings. Um, Joseph McCarthy became such a villain on television. He couldn't stop. He was kind of the J.R. Ewing of his day. And people could not stop watching those hearings live that would supersede the soap operas that were also becoming very popular. Yeah. You know, know, uh, Manny, you mentioned uh, two or three shows that I think you could categorize as news. And uh, a news was a very, it, it, there was a famous episode, I think it was in, in Philadelphia or outside Pennsylvania, a, a little girl fell down a well. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the local station went, sent a camera out there and they stayed on it for like 24 hours. Yeah, that that's kind that's of, bad. that kind of thing, whether it's the conventions or the Army McCarthy hearings or a little girl down a well, that kind of live news coverage really set TV apart from movies. And I don't think the movie moguls in the beginning understood how different the two mediums were. were. No, it, it made stars of Walter Cronkite, Huntley and Brinkley. Right. Uh, the Today Show emerge, Meet the Press. Yep. All of these shows became very important. And you're right, the movie moguls had no clue. But then they they learned to embrace everything. And what ended up happening is they allowed television to air the Oscars finally yeah. in 1952. And then something really magical happened. Teleplay writers emerged and they were starting to write live dramas for 50s television and uh, pre-recorded dramas that yep. were Westerns. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the combination of the live dramas and the Westerns made stars of sure. television actors that had that had studied the method. So going live was a really good thing for a method actor. Mm-hmm. So people like uh, Joanne Woodward and, and, and uh, uh, um, Rod Steiger and, and Ernest Borgnine and um, Eva Marie Saint, yeah, and uh, these these were these were people that emerged from television and became movie stars, and the pieces themselves became very famous as television movies, and then they became big movies. 
Judge and a Miller. lot of a lot of writers. Yes, I'm going to get to that in a second, but mm. let me just mention a couple of these movies. Patterns, Judgment, uh, Judgment at Nuremberg, yeah. uh, a Requiem for a Heavyweight, and most importantly, Marty. Because then Marty mm. won the uh, Oscar for Best Picture, and it comes from a teleplay. Sure. So and so it made it made the writers and the directors Abby Mann, Patty yeah. Chayefsky, and most famously R Rod Serling. But also, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember the Twilight Zone. Uh, yeah. uh, I actually remember all of the events he talked about. I watched on TV. Uh, right. But uh, uh, they had live drama, which uh, John, uh, you know something about, wasn't it? Was it live? Uh, Charlton Heston. Uh, what was it like a, a live theater? Uh, my my first role on television at seven years old was on I want to say the Philco Playhouse. Philco I can't Playhouse. I can't guarantee that was the name of it, okay. and it was about the Middle Ages, and I was one of ten kids rolling down a street in the Middle Ages, <laughs> rolling and and running past. Um, um, all right, what's his name? John Heston. Don't take it. Thank you. Don't take it. <laughs> yeah, the guy. Right. Dead end. Um, so that was my first role on television. Wow. So, yeah, all of that just just kind of coalesced together. Mm -hmm. The movie moguls were helpless to do anything about it. And you know what? At the end of the day, what it because they were so so they concentrated so much on solving this television issue they ignored what the real problem was going to be which was the actors the movie actors were going to form their own production company starting to work for united artists you bet and that was the disintegration of the movie studio it wasn't television that disintegrated the movie studio it was the actors deciding that they wanted their own say to which parts they were going to play forming their own production companies, Robert Redford, Burt Lancaster, Humphrey Bogart. They all formed their own uh, production companies. And guess what? Uh, the uh, movie studios became less relevant. Uh, it took more money to make bigger films because that's the direction they were headed. And if, if the film wasn't a hit, it could destroy a company. I mean, for example, Cleopatra, I don't think to this day they've ever recouped the money they made a 20th Century Fox did for Cleopatra. So also, yeah. all of the yeah. all of the major studios have television divisions now, so that the, yes. they're using all of their otherwise excess space, uh, and they built especially to produce uh, weekly uh, television programs and to sure. add live action and all the stuff which would have been unheard yeah. of in the early days of television. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to bite you in the butt because really, mm -hmm. the, it's the movie studios that are working on streaming services now to create cinematic experiences on television. And it's making broadcast television less relevant in 2023. Mm -hmm. So whatever goes around, comes around. And that's probably the epilogue to this whole story. Yeah, it was a very incestuous time because after all, all these television stations needed yeah. product right. to air. Where, where could they get this product? Yes, they could do Yankee baseball or Dodger baseball, but in between those baseball games, what did they air? Old movies yeah, and western, yeah, western old TV shows, westerns, old serials. Yeah, yeah. Bang the merciless, <laughs> the million dollar movie and the fabulous fifty two. Oh of yeah, course. yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah interesting times. Yeah, you make a good point, John. Yeah, huh. interesting times, complicated times, but uh, great to look back on. And I think we should all take a break now and go uh, watch Pluto TV. <laughs> and see some of the good stuff, or go to Vintage Film Channel, where Grace has a whole bunch of uh, early TV uh, 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 programs here and there, and it was a lot of fun. And quite frankly, I enjoyed. Thank you for taking me down memory lane. To I remember all the. I actually remember the McCarthy hearings. I was riveted to my yeah. TV. Oh yeah. Yeah. Amazing. That big seven inch screen. Absolutely. Well, you grab the popcorn art. John and I will sit on the couch and we'll we'll start watching those old old films. You got to do. <laughs> See you guys on television. See you guys. <laughs> bye bye. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.